The head of Japan's major talent agency, Julie Fujishima, has resigned over allegations of sexual abuse by its late founder. The Johnny & Associates founder, Johnny Kitagawa, is accused of abusing a large number of, of young men from the 1950s through to the 2010s. Kitagawa was arguably the most influential figure in Japan's entertainment industry, and his agency has held a near monopoly on Japanese boy bands for decades. Decades. He died in 2019. Well, live now to Tokyo, and we can speak to our correspondent there, Shaima Khalil. Shaima, just tell us what we're hearing from the company today. Well, today is a hugely significant day for Japan, especially the Japanese entertainment industry. We're seeing the fallout from the sexual abuse allegations now reach all the way to the top. And for the first time, Julie Fujishima, the current CEO of uh, Johnny and Associates, A, has admitted for the first time that sexual abuse of young boys has taken place in her late uncle's agency and then announced her resignation. Uh, Nuriyuki Higashiyama, a household name here in Japan, an entertainer, um, a TV presenter, and one of the first uh, talent recruiters talents recruited by uh, the agency is going to replace her as um, CEO. And you cannot overstate the influence, the power that uh, and the figure uh, that um, Johnny Kitagawa was. He really was a star maker, a talent manager, but really a national figure. If you were a young teenage boy that wanted to break out into the entertainment industry, his agency was your gateway. And yet for decades, the sexual abuse allegations had marred his career. Some of them were actually proven in court, but he was never uh, charged. All of this resurfaced earlier this year in a BBC documentary. Victims spoke to the BBC. They spoke of their um, experiences. There were also claims that because of his power, it stifled the reporting of this on local channels and discouraged people from coming forward. After it aired, more people came forward. And last week, an investigation found that he repeatedly abused boys um, in the 1950s through the 70s and beyond 2010, but also found that this family business, the fact that it was a family management, allowed the atmosphere of that abuse to continue and said that Miss Fujishima's claims that she had no idea about her uncle's um, uh, activities were a lie. Today, she steps down. Today, we have a new CEO that is very well versed into how this agency works. It begs the question how many people, how many more people will come forward, but also how this is going to change and the future of this agency, this brand that has been synonymous with fame, with power, with J-pop, with entertainment, and has now been very, very publicly disgraced. And Shaimu there, you mentioned the J-pop industry, the popular J-pop industry. How is this yeah. scandal impacting Japan's entertainment industry? Well, the thing about it is that not only is he an influential figure it, or was an influential figure in Japan's entertainment industry, in a way, Johnny Kitagawa was Japan's entertainment industry. All the big stars or many of the big stars that you see here um, in the country have come through that agency. How will it affect it? It's very hard to say at the moment, but what we've heard from that press conference which actually was being watched by some of the victims, is that there are going to be structural differences in how the talent is being managed and, of course, protected. Thank you very much. Our Tokyo correspondent there, Shaima Khalil.